thing from the back. The what? Okay, bait gathering. 101. <laughs> Hopefully bait gathering. Yes. So first thing you do is you find a dam with some good weed in it in the hope of getting some mud eyes, which are the dragonfly larva. So easy access is one thing. Well, so far not good, folks. There can be a number of factors that stop uh, dams from being good mud eye dams. Number one is water quality. Number two is whether there might be some fish in there. If there's fish in there, the mud eyes get snapped up pretty quickly. Just about every species likes a mud eye. Uh, what have we got? One very, very tiny. Too small to keep. So there are some in here, that's something, but um, there is one in here. they're not uh, mature at all at the moment. Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to another Fish Talk video. Something a bit different today. Jamie and his wife Mandy and I have come up to Lake Bougainvillea, or the Dartmouth Pondage, as it's sometimes known. And we're going to do some bubble floating with mud eyes, uh, a bit of power bait on the bottom and maybe just cast some soft plastics and lures around as well. This is Lake Benambula, as you can see. It's a, uh, it's a holding dam for Lake Dartmouth and it has hydro power on it as well. A beautiful spot to be. So we've taken up residence on this bank here. The water is reasonably low. High water mark is over there where you can see it coming down off the hill and uh, we're just going to see how we go okay so there's a bubble float it's uh, filled with water uh, the little black thing underneath it is called a ledger slop so basically what happens is that the float can free run up and down the line and uh, our bait which is a mud eye is suspended underneath it and it can free swim as well so you get it out there you let the current and the wind do the work and uh, it's a very relaxing way to fish anyway we will uh, get a rod out then we'll show you a bit more of the place so when you're bubble floating you tend to use fairly light monofilament or you can use braided line you fish with an open bale arm um, and the float which you probably can't see out there it's a fair way out the float is quite visible. Uh, it's, a, it's a good natural presentation of a bait. A very relaxing way to fish. At the moment, Jamie and Mandy are set up further down the bank that way. So uh, we will uh, just see how we go.
All right, now Jamie's getting himself rigged up here. That's his, his float. And a little ledger stop underneath, which is just a, a plastic sleeve with a pin in it, basically, isn't Pretty it? Much. And, uh, and it just free runs. And so down to his hook down there. Tiny little hook. And he's going to be putting a, a mud eye onto that. Mesh, so they can hide and get away Okay, from that's a mud eye there. That's called a cooter mud eye. Nice long one. The other style, of course, is the spider mud eye, but these are our preferred weapons. Nice and dark, these ones, Jamie. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Very nice indeed. So, uh, so they're, they're sort of like caviar for trout, these things. Not many trout can uh, resist them. No. Let's hope today is no exception. Well, it won't be the bait's fault if, it's, if it is no exception. Well, no, you would think not. Because it's... Uh, Sort of mid-afternoon and very bright. We've got a worm on the bottom on that rod there and on this little rod here I we'll have a mud eye under a float. Because the wind is blowing reasonably strongly straight up the lake it means that you've got to recast the float fairly regularly but that's okay. Amy's got a small red fin up there along the bank so uh, that's a start, I suppose. Was that on your mud eye? Yeah. Terrific. <laughs> Red fin on a mud eye. Chocolates to pigs, as we say. But anyway, at least it's a fish. Lake Banambula redfin. Pesty. Not huge, but beautifully coloured, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, nice lovely, bright red fins. Lovely little fish. Mm. So, as Jamie said, if we can get half a dozen of them, we've got to feed. They're as good at eating fish as, freshwater eating fish as any you can get. Uh, There's no doubt. What did a friend of mine say? The uh, freshwater flathead. Yeah, yeah. They're great. Yeah, you can, you can uh, freeze them and, and bring them out of the freezer three or four months later and they still taste great. Yep. So. And they're also a noxious pest and so we get rid of them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so Mandy's got herself a nice small rainbow there. She'll probably put it back, but uh, usually as the uh, evening comes on, the fishing gets a bit better up here, so that's good to see. So this is your second one, Mandy, is it? Yeah, this one's not nice fat. Oh, he's a beautiful fat little fish, isn't he? Yeah, lovely, lovely looking fish. Solid. Very solid, yeah. So again on a... Mud eye? Mud eye, yep. Yep, beautifully done. What's not, the time now? It's uh, 25 or 22 7. 20, well, no, it's quarter to 7. Quarter to 7, yeah. Oh, well, it's evenings and early mornings are always the best up here, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, really? see you moving. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a lot of, there's some very big fish out further. jumping further out. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, oh, he's a beautiful little fish. Well done. Well done. All right, here we are. Back at the Bannambula Pondage, or still at the Bannambula Pondage, we're all going through a bit of water. Mandy's got another one. This is a th three one, uh, three nil. Not sure what it is, rainbow or brown. Oh, it's a good brownie. It's a beautiful big brownie. Just there, there's a float. Just we'll slacken your drag off a bit, Mant. Just in this shallow water. I'm just trying to give me some air. Yeah. He didn't quite much to start with. Are you going to keep it? Oh. Up to you. Yes, we can. He's a cracking fish. So a fish what, of about three pound, Roscoe? Yeah, yeah. Maybe nice fish. a little bit better. Mm. And the good part, we use the 
open bail arm so that they run yep and hooked well down so we're going to keep this fish so that's why we're yep very yeah, good very nice it. it's a beautiful condition just hold him up straight if you can yeah look at that yeah that's beautiful and smile well done. well done so it's been a pretty good afternoon really we haven't uh the weather as you can see the wind has died away beautifully terrific conditions for bubble floating right now we've still got about half an hour to three quarters an hour of light that we'll be fishing in we aren't finished just yet for sure because uh, this is when the good fishing normally starts there's plenty of fish moving on the surface at the moment so we'll keep at them i might uh, change to two bubble floats now because uh, for that very reason because there's so many fish up on the top so uh, we'll see if that might help yeah i am <laughs> Not very big though, I don't think, Jamie. <laughs> I don't think so. It's a little rainbow. The ready, Roscoe? Another little red fin, yeah. And, uh, Bit of a good keeper that one, he'd be probably 25 to 28 centimetres I was going to say something. 26, 28, something around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah but beautifully coloured out of this clear water. Nice and heavy through yeah. the shoulders, yeah. so, so he'll be... A uh, couple of fillets off him. Yeah, yeah, with two of them in the bag, you... Uh, well, that's three now. Is it? Three, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, well, that makes, a, that makes a meal. So, that does. Uh, well done. That does, and Laurie's rod came good for you. Laurie's rod did come good, eventually, it's yeah. It's a shame it's not the 10-pounder that he used to catch on us. No. That's right. There is quite a large termite hatch happening right now. And uh, there are a lot of fish rising out there. Hell of a lot of fish. The action's picked up quite a bit as it's got later. Mandy's got, I don't know, nearly four, I think, four trout. So she's done pretty well. Um, Jamie's got a few redfin, so it's been a reasonably successful afternoon. It's beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah, if you can see Mandy out there in the, uh, yeah, she, she's not God. I well, we should be able to crop that <laughs> and find it, but there. No, it's not moving, man. For a fair while. We had it quite hectic here for fish on the surface, so slow down a bit now. And we're just wondering, because the water is rising, where that rod holder is now, uh, less than 10 minutes ago, it was out of the water. So, and this one was way out of the water when, I, when you came over. Yeah. Uh, so it's rising quite significantly and quite quickly. So we're thinking that the fish might have gone upstream following the, uh, the cold water that's coming in. But it's certainly slowed down a bit now, so uh, but it's been a good day. Been a really good day. Uh, into the last couple of casts here, and that's gone. Gee, look how far in the water that uh, rod is now, that rod holder. You might move it back a bit, Ross. You could just about do a time lapse, couldn't you? Yep. So uh, that's now currently out of the water, but I reckon I could sit, hold that on there and we could watch it go under. <laughs> okay, that's what, less than five minutes, less Jamie, since we moved those up. Three, three yeah. minutes. So you uh, do have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, you, you've got to be a bit vigilant. Where those trees are out there is a long spit of land that you can get out to quite easily. Yep. But um, yeah, if it were to come up and you were staying out there late and then didn't realise, um, yeah, you can get yourself no, caught. No, you'd be swimming back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you'd probably have to leave half your gear behind because... Could, uh, it, it dips, there's a dip in the middle there. Yep. As well, so yeah, this this area through where Ross has been fishing is a is bit of a, a gutter that goes through here and it opens up there and you can allows you to get out onto that spit of land. But, mm. Mm, and then quite deep on the, on the far side. So anyway, we've got a fast rising pondage here. 
But the fishing has slackened off mm. in the last uh, 15 minutes or so, but all up, pretty good day. How many did uh, Mandy end up with, Jamie? Uh, she's caught three trout. Three trout, and uh, you've got... Five red fin. Five red fin. <laughs> I I've have got, not caught a trout. I've got one little run trout, so... Oh, oh well, we've got nearly 10 fish. And you had another one us. Had I another had another one on, yeah. On. Yeah. yeah, so... Uh, so it's been all right. It's been pretty good. Always a nice place to be anyway. Oh, the pond is lovely. Yeah. So, yeah, if you've never tried uh, bubble floating, it's a fairly cheap way to get into the sport. You just need a nice long whippy rod. It is preferable if you can, uh, if you've got one in your arsenal, something around the seven to eight foot mark yep. is ideal. Uh, you need bubble floats. Don't get the little red and white ones. Where, on. With the clips through them, get normal flow through uh, bubble floats, they're much, much better. And fairly good quality ledger stops too. The best you can afford, yeah. Yeah, because they do split and uh, and they run up and down the line on you, you don't want that. And then to top it off, uh, Daiichi or um, one of the better brands of mud eye hooks and you're away. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the other thing is if you're, if you're fishing with mono, uh, there's a thing called silicon muslin, which you would, you just uh, run it along your line and it gives it some floating. You can buy floating mono these days, I think, can't you, Jamie? Oh, I don't know. I haven't seen that. I'm pretty sure it is available, but uh, but it's pretty easy. Um, and do not fish any heavier than about six pound line, four to six pounds, because if you get into the ten pound range, you're better. Uh, you're just going to have loops in your line. It's going to be like a coiled spring. It's going to want to come back towards you. So, uh, yep. so a nice light line, and and really, you'll you'll land anything that's likely to latch on with six pound line as long as you play it properly. Yep. Okay. Thanks, folks. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and we'll have more fish talk video in the near future. And we're about to watch Mandy uh, sink. Don't go over. <laughs> Yeah, don't go over because I can't pick you up properly from this distance.